Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Sunday the 27th of December 2015 and we hope and trust that our subscribers and listeners have had a most enjoyable Christmas. This week we are producing videos on our views about gold, silver and other precious metals for 2016. And we shall also be covering the issue of manipulation and the TTIP. But for today, we have decided to have a change and actually speak about one of the great conspiracy targets of our time, the Bilderberg Group. Who they are, where they came from, what is their purpose, and should we be concerned about them? The Bilderberg Group, Bilderberg Conference or Bilderberg Club is an annual, unofficial, invitation-only conference of approximately 120 to 140 guests from North America and Western Europe, most of whom are people of influence. About one-third are from government and politics, and two-thirds from finance, industry, labour, education and communications. Meetings are closed to the public and often feature future political leaders shortly before they become household names. The original Bilderberg Conference was held at the Hotel de Bilderberg near Arnhem in the Netherlands from the 29th of May to the 31st of May 1954. It was initiated by several people including Dennis Healy, former Labour UK Chancellor of the Exchequer, and Josef Rettinger, concerned about the growth of anti-Americanism in Western Europe, who proposed an international conference at which leaders from European countries and the United States would be brought together with the aim of promoting understanding between the cultures of the United States and Western Europe. Rettinger, who was a Polish polit political advisor, approached Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands, who agreed to promote the idea, together with Belgium Prime Minister Paul van Zeeland and the head of Unilever at the time, the Dutchman Paul Rijkens. Bernhard in turn contacted Walter Bedel Smith then head of the CIA, who asked Eisenhower's advisor Charles Douglas Jackson to deal with the suggestion. The guest list was drawn up by inviting two attendees from each nation, one of each to represent conservative and liberal points of view. Fifty delegates from 11 countries in Western Europe attended the first conference, along with 11 Americans. The success of the meeting led the organisers to arrange an annual conference. A permanent steering committee was established with Rettinger appointed as permanent secretary. As well as organising the conference, the steering committee also maintained a register of attendee names and contact details with the aim of creating an informal network of individuals who could call upon one another in a private capacity. Conferences were held in France, Germany and Denmark over the following three years. The first US conference was held in 1957 at St. Simons, Georgia. Since then, the group has met and meets annually at hotels and resorts throughout the world for two consecutive years in Europe, followed by a year in the United States or Canada. As already mentioned, meetings are organised by a steering committee, with two members from each of around 18 nations. Official posts, in addition to a chairman, include an honorary secretary general. There is no such category in the group's rules as a member of the group. The only category that exists is member of the steering committee. In addition to the committee there are also a separate advisory group 
though membership of these overlap. The costs of a small secretariat are met wholly by private subscription, according to the group's official website, while the bill for the conference itself is taken care of by the committee members from the host country. The Bilderberg Group's unofficial headquarters is the University of Leiden in the Netherlands. The Bilderberg's group original goal of promoting Atlanticism, of strengthening US-European relations and preventing another world war has grown and expanded down the years. Its theme now is to, quote, bolster a consensus around free market Western capitalism and its interests around the globe, unquote. At least according to Andrew Kakabadze, then Professor of International Management Development at Cranfield University School of Management and now Professor of Governance and Leadership at the Henley Business School, University of Reading. Interestingly, in 2001, Dennis Healy, a Bilderberg Group founder and a steering committee member for 30 years, said, to say we were striving for a one world government is exaggerated, but not wholly unfair. Those of us in Bilderberg felt we couldn't go on forever fighting one another for nothing and killing people and rendering millions homeless. So we felt that a single community throughout the world would be a good thing. According to former chairman Etienne Davignon, in 2011, a major attraction of Bilderberg Group meetings is that they provide an opportunity for participants to speak and debate candidly and to find out what major figures really think without the risk of off-the-cuff comments becoming fodder for controversy in the media. A 2008 press release from the American Friends of Bilderberg stated that Bilderberg's only activity is its annual conference and that at the meetings no resolutions were proposed, no votes taken and no policy statements issued. However, in November 2009, the group hosted a dinner meeting at the Chateau of Val Duchesse in Brussels, outside its annual conference to promote the candidacy of Herman van Rompuy for President of the Euro European Council. Historically, attendee lists have been weighted towards politicians, bankers and directors of large businesses, though certain heads of state including Juan Carlos I of Spain and Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands have also attended. The current chairman of the group is Henry de Castries, chairman and CEO of AXA Group, and he presided over the 2015 conference, which was the 63rd Bilderberg Conference, which took place from the 11th to the 14th of June 2000 and 15 in Taufsbuchen, Austria. The list of those who participated is available at www.bilderbergmeetings.org. The key topics for discussion this year included artificial intelligence, cyber security, chemical weapons threats, current economic issues, European strategy, globalization, Greece, Iran, Middle East, NATO, Russia, terrorism, United Kingdom, USA and US elections. Conducted under the Charter House rules, no minutes are taken, no reports written, no resolutions proposed and no votes taken and finally no policy statements issued as a result. Now let's move on to the issue of conspiracy. 
Partly because of its working methods to ensure strict privacy, the Bilderberg Group is accused of conspiracies. This outlook has been popular on both extremes of the political spectrum, even if they disagree on what the group wants to do. Some on their left accuse the Bilderberg Group of conspiring to impose capitalist domination, while some on the right have accused the group of conspiring to impose a world government and planned economy, as abbreviated by the expression, a new world order. Proponents of Bilderberg conspiracy theories in the United States include individuals and groups such as the John Birch Society, political activist Phyllis Schlafly, who wrote in a self-published book, A Choice, Not an Echo, that the Republican Party was secretly controlled by Bilderbergers to help pave the way for world communism. Writer and activist Jim Tucker, radio host Alex Jones, and politician Jesse Ventura, who made the Bilderberg Group a topic of a 2009 episode of his True TV series titled Conspiracy Theory with Jesse Ventura. Non-American accusers include Russian-Canadian writer Daniel S. Doolin and UK author and broadcaster David Icke, best known for his lizard conspiracies. G. William Domhoff, a research professor in psychology and sociology who studies theories of power, sees the role of international relations forums and social clubs such as the Bilderberg Group as a place to share ideas, reach consensus and create social cohesion within a power elite. He adds that this understanding of forums and clubs such as the Bilderberg Group fits with the perceptions of the members of such an elite. Author James McConaughey comments that conspiracy theorists have a point, but that they fail to communicate it effectively. He argues that the Bilderberg Group acts in a manner consistent with a global conspiracy, but does so without the same degree of nefariousness, a difference not appreciated by conspiracy theorists who tend to see this cabal as outright evil. McConaughey concludes, and we quote, Occasionally you have to give credit to conspiracy theorists who raise issues that the mainstream press has ignored. It's only recently that the media has picked up on the Bilderbergers. Would the media be running stories if there weren't these wild allegations flying around? Unquote. So what is our view of this organisation? Well, frankly, we ourselves have been in our youth privy to a similar organisation in the United Kingdom called Common Purpose. We also met under Chatham House rules, were invited as we were regarded as potential future leaders of our organisations, and we came from business, the military, the voluntary sector, politics and public services. We met the actual leaders in each of these fields and discussed topical subjects of the day. The idea behind it was to gain an understanding of what people in other areas thought and what were the views of the establishment at the time. We suspect that Bilderberg is similar in some respects, save that its attendees are mostly, but not exclusively, the decision makers themselves. Is it possible that they could agree certain policies in secret? Of course it is. But they could do so also by telephone or teleconference incognito without running the risk of being identified by activists or those opposed to such gatherings. It would indeed be naive to think or even suppose that people in such positions of power do not call one another on a regular basis and ask favours, 
exert pressure or request advice from each other. So is Bilderberg such a big deal to us? Not really. As if these people really wanted to undertake nefarious activities, they have plenty of opportunity to do so with even greater secrecy via technology. For interest, let's listen to what a senior UK politician and former Chancellor of the Exchequer and a 10 year steering group member of Bilderberg said when questioned about Bilderberg in the House of Commons in June 2013. We think you'll find his answers interesting, if not believable. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, th this is the first occasion for me, as I've never previously answered a question in the House of Commons on behalf of a private organisation uh, for which the government has no responsibility. Uh, I, I have actually been a member of the steering committee of Bilderberg for many years now, I think about uh, 10 years, and by chance actually this is my last year because we have a rule against being on the committee for too long, so I'm on the point of stepping down. Um, <laughs> It, 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 other, others are timeless with no rules at all, but this particular role I have now reached the end of my allotted span. The, 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 um, <laughs> the, the Bilderberg organization exists for the purpose of holding meetings so once a year in various countries. It exists for no other purpose. Uh, and uh, this year the meeting was uh, held at a large hotel near Watford in Hertfordshire. Uh, the, the, I didn't receive adequate notice of this question as it happens that I wasn't found in time to put to hand the list of those who participated and the agenda which we discussed but we always circulate those before the meeting and they're readily available and I can certainly put any honourable member in touch with a, a source of the list of those who, who took uh, part. Each year we, we invite uh, something over 100 people, it was about 140 this year, uh, drawn from both sides of the Atlantic, from Europe, uh, including Turkey, uh, and uh, from the United States and Canada. The people who attend are drawn from the worlds of government, politics, academia, defense, journalism. Uh, we all attend, in an, the, the, the people who attend change slightly each year. There's a core of those who regularly attend, different people come. Well, I'm, I'm trying to guess at what on earth people are asking a parliamentary question about this for and what they're interested in. Uh, all the people who attend, attend as individuals. We invite people as individuals. Nobody, nobody, nobody attends representing any particular organisation to which they might belong. And a very interesting two or three days take place in which we have discussions on matters of public affairs uh, there's a very wide range of experience, a very wide range of political opinion uh, represented, and uh, they, uh, they, I always find it greatly adds to the depth of my understanding of what is being talked about and contemplated in many parts of the states and uh, in Europe as well. And it's one of many political gatherings I attend from time to time as part of the background uh, to my activities. And uh, if the Honourable Member for Oldham finds something deeply disturbing in all this, I would only advise that he finds different people to exchange tweets with on his internet. <laughs> and perhaps the House might be allowed to return to some matter of rather or you know, real public interest yeah, yeah, yeah. in which this House of Commons has a role to play. Yeah, <laughs> the, 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 the Bilderberg meeting does not take any decisions. It doesn't have any resolutions. Uh, we, 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 ha we couldn't possibly reach decisions because of the range of opinions actually represented there. It, it, it is purely a Chatham House rules discussion between the people he describes. Uh, uh, and the, 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 amongst those there, the Shadow Chancellor was there, Peter Mandelson was there, Prime Minister was there, Chancellor.
Also, the Checker was there. <laughs> And most of us said things which, in the discussions which wouldn't have come as a surprise to any of us because we'd off, we knew what our opinions were. We go there for the chance of having an off-the-record informal discussion with the range of people he's described who are indeed distinguished but are not remotely interested in getting together to decide or organise anything. So there we have it, fully explained by a senior politician. What more evidence do you need? <laughs> we hope you found this video helpful and informative and would appreciate it if you would give it a thumb up, comment and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. Please share this on Twitter and follow us at Illuminati Silver One. Also do view our website at www.illuminatisilver.com and subscribe to our free mailing list for special mailings, bulletins and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we're not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. <laughs>